Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. <clears throat> so tonight we got uh, Monday Night Meatloaf. And um, I just want to start out by uh, giving a shout out and a thank you to a few special viewers that uh, have uh, taken the time to send me something through the mail. Uh, a little appreciation gift, whatever you want to call it. Um, anyway, a few folks have sent me some stuff and uh, it's, uh, it's really... Uh, a nice acknowledgement, let me just put it that way. So uh, let's just start out. Uh, we'll do those first. Uh, and then we got some other things to talk about too. So the first one is for uh, uh, Ivan Hamilton. And he's a guy down in Australia. And uh, he's building his own CNC machines down there, uh, including the electronics. So uh, he's really uh, um, bitten off a big chunk down there. And he's working on that. So he's doing some cool stuff. And um, he heard me talking about um, uh, welding helmets and uh, how I hadn't tried one of these uh, auto darkening hoods and uh, that I was a, kind of an old dog and tough for me to learn new tricks. So anyway, uh, he challenged me a little bit and uh, so he sent me, a, uh, he sent me a, uh, one of these Rhino uh, self darkening or auto darkening hoods and I tried it out actually. and. Uh, uh, it was completely counter to my uh, uh, my all my training. Uh, you know, I really wanted to flip something down because I didn't want to strike the arc while I was still looking at it. I closed my eyes inside the foot and everything. So uh, anyway, they do work. Um, and um, but immediately I discovered, uh, um, or I was limited by uh, another one of my own weaknesses is uh, I need uh, magnifiers in my hood. So, um, anyway, I have a pretty, uh, pretty good magnifier in my regular welding hood, the one you guys see me using all the time. Um, and I was looking online and I couldn't find one specific for this hood. So maybe if somebody knows uh, where you can get the, uh, a magnifier for a rhino hood like this, uh, send me a comment, let me know, because I'd like to experiment with it a little bit. Um, it's... It's a little heavier than my other hood, uh, but that's okay, that's not bad. Uh, it's got good coverage and uh, it does work. So anyway, Ivan, thanks very much for that. I really appreciate it and uh, uh, we're going to try it out. So uh, we're going we're gonna to thoroughly test it. So uh, the next one um, is a guy, uh, John Riley, and uh, he really liked the, uh, the bottle lift uh, episode that we did. Uh, for lifting the gas cylinder, and I mentioned that uh, I wasn't happy with the uh, the ratchet strap buckle and uh, and all that. So uh, he took the time and he wrote me a little letter, and we communicated on email a little bit. And he sent me a couple of, uh, of really cool uh, kind of heavy duty uh, military. Uh, um, oops! How do you... Oh, there it is. I was pulling on the wrong side. So these are military buckles. They, they look like they're off a parachute rig to me. Um, and I really love them. They're, they got a knurled knob here and they got this little, this thing's welded on. Anyway, these are, uh, looks like you could, lift a, you could lift a milling machine with these. And they're still fairly light. Anyway, so we might uh, try putting one of those on, the, uh, on that bottle lift so that we're not feeding that big buckle through. So anyway, that's John Riley. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, Mrs. Ox was looking at these and, uh, and and really liking the looks of these for a project to her. So they might they might go over to her. But anyway, thank you very much for that. Um, so uh, the next one here is a kind of a local guy, um, and um, he he's one of these uh, guys that reads the stuff in the background of the of the video. So. Uh, he saw something on my tool list up on the bulletin board there and, uh, and um, sent me a, uh, a little tool and uh, it's, a, uh, it's an adjustable parallel so, and it's the smallest one that they make. And what was interesting is that uh, I, I don't have any of this, uh, of this A size um, and I just recently saw one uh, for the first time and I realized it was smaller than my smallest one so of course I, there can't be a tool that I don't have, you know. I mean, so I had to, I had to possess one, and uh, so I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget about it. Anyway, uh, um, Tom's a nice guy, and uh, uh, he appreciates the videos and the time that I take to put into this stuff. 
And so he sent me a little gift, and uh, and uh, and it was one of these parallels. So uh, now I I use them in pairs, so I'm going to have to buy another one. And nobody sent me another one. I don't I don't need another one. I'll get one myself. Um, but it's a really nice Starrett uh, 154A adjustable parallel. So thanks very much, Tom. Appreciate that. Very nice. Okay, so um, the next one is. Um, Brad Martin. So uh, Brad uh, has a little business called uh, Tactical Keychains. So I think it's www.tacticalkeychains.com. And um, anyway, he and I chatted on email a little bit, and uh, um, he sent me some uh, some toys to play with. And we're going to shoot a little video with uh, using one of his toys. And this is one of his products here. And I'll, I'll zoom in on this stuff so you guys can see it. Um, and what it is, is it's a, he makes them in his garage, I guess, and anodizes them and everything. It's a little titanium folding lock pick set. So, it's got a bunch of picks. It's got a bunch of picks on one side. And then on the other side, it's got the tension tool, uh, which you can pop out. It's got a quick release little thing, so you can get that in the, uh, in the lock, and then you can work the lock. And then uh, when you're all done... <laughs> When you're done and uh, uh, doing what you're doing, whatever you're doing, picking locks, you can uh, uh, put this all away in your pocket. So anyway, we're going to demonstrate that. Uh, I got a great little idea for that, and uh, and uh, we'll shoot a little video on that too. So thanks very much, um, Brad. Appreciate that. And uh, he sent me a couple other little things too, uh, uh, just to try out also. So thanks, Brad. And then. Um, when I got home today, there was a little package there, and uh, uh, my wife said, geez, uh, you get all these little boxes all the time, and uh, I said, oh, really? And uh, so I looked, and uh, there was another little box there, and so I opened it up, and uh, what was inside was a, a nice little letter um, and some tungstens, some tungsten electrodes. So uh, this is from Joe uh, Bonfiglio in uh, Pepperell, Massachusetts, Massachusetts. And he bought a big box of, uh, of tungstens, and, uh, which is, he says is a lifetime supply for him. So uh, anyway, he sent me a couple to, to try out, and, uh, and I appreciate that. They're, they're lanthanated, uh, uh, and they have cerium and zirconium in it. I, I've used the lanthanated ones, and I actually really like them. Uh, they carry more current than, um, than your standard thoriated electrodes. Um, a lot of people are worried about uh, radiation problems with uh, thorium. Um, and anyway, I'm still here. I've been doing it for years. I've been welding since I was nine years old, okay? So uh, um, maybe it affects some people. It has affected me. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks, Joe. Really appreciate that. And um, um, he sent me some tungstens and, uh, and a nice note here. I'm not going to read the whole note. It's, uh, it's kind of between me and him. and uh, So I just wanted to say thanks, Joe, for that. Okay, so um, that's kind of it for, the, uh, for uh, the acknowledgments there right now. And uh, we're going to talk about a couple other things here. The, uh, the coolant, my coolant dispenser is getting a lot of attention. It's be, been seen in the background of the videos a couple of times now and so people are real curious about it so we're going to talk about that um, we're also going to uh, let's see what are we gonna, oh uh, somebody was curious about the uh, the take torch holder so we're going to talk about that and I got a great story to go with that one and uh, and then we're going to shoot a little video uh, with Brad's uh, uh, folding lockpick set so okay so let's uh, let's get going here Okay, so here's the uh, here's the coolant dispenser. I'll give you guys an overview first here. Um, so this is something that I've been working on for I don't know six months or something like that. Um, I've used Cool Mist things before, but I wanted to create my own because um, the of the fogging effects uh, of, of the standard Cool Mist system. So uh, Mr. James Kilroy kind of beat me to the punch there, and uh, he started. He identified some of the same weaknesses as uh, 
as I did with the cool mist. Uh, so he started building a, a system. So uh, I've been following him um, uh, quite pretty curiously. And uh, a few people have commented on this rig here. So what we have is we have uh, air coming in here. We have a, a, a low pressure regulator here. Uh, this is the part that uh, that I made that's that's special. Uh, and then my pressure vessel and my coolant storage is just a two liter bottle here. And these are good to almost 200 PSI here, uh, just for people that are wondering about that. And I'll give you two guesses how I, uh, uh, I know that. Uh, and the first guess doesn't count. Anyway, uh, so you can have a, you know, th these are literally free. And uh, so you can have a whole bunch of this stuff already mixed up sitting in the corner, right? And then you just swap these out. And um, so I matched the, uh, there's a very special thread on the bottle. And, uh, and I matched that thread on the bottle. It's a buttress thread. It's a weird bottle buttress thread. And then there's a gland seal here. And, uh, but the nut's the trick part here. Anyway, so you just pop that on, slide it on your gland like that. And then thread this on, and it pulls it up and seals it. Okay, and both of, there's two lines here. Uh, one is air and one is liquid. So the air comes in, it takes a right turn, and goes down and pressurizes the bottle inside. And then that in turn, when we open this other, one valve, brings coolant up the dip tube and through the coolant line. So I can get pure coolant, um, and then we have a, a straight through path here that's pure air. So I can get any combination of pure air, pure coolant, or mix thereof. Now, the part that I was fussing around with was this end of it here. And um, I got this flyer from, um, from Traverse Tool. And lo and behold, one of my favorite companies, uh, Noga, uh, makes this thing called a Mini Cool. And I'm like, and I read the thing, and I read the thing, and I go, oh my god, that is just what I'm trying to create on my own. Now, the Noga stuff, they don't give it away, okay? It's, it's, it's not cheap, but, you know, neither's my time, right? And uh, so I said, geez, you know, let's just try it, okay? And I got it, and I fiddled around with it, and it works pretty good. So, in fact, I'm uh, probably not going to mess with it much more. Um, to me, this was, this was the, the part of the tricky part, but I was having more trouble at this end here, um, making the thing mix the way I wanted to. And uh, uh, now I was building the valves myself. I made some needle valves and did some other stuff. Anyway, this was way easier, okay? Um, it worked, but not the way I wanted it to. And I'll demonstrate this in a second. So the other thing is, you guys have also noticed that uh, I don't use a lot of air in the shop. And part of it's the noise and of the compressor running and then the air blowing. So this thing's actually pretty quiet. And what I have it connected to is I have it connected to a, a very small little diaphragm pump used for uh, drying um, negatives. And it only makes about 30 PSI, but I can deadhead that pump. And I'm going to turn it on right now. Let's see, this is a... And you can kind of hear it. You can hear it in the background back there. It's not particularly loud. Oops, we got some air coming out of there. There we go. So that's the air valve here. So that's pure air there. And then I can throttle the air with this and meter it and then shut it off. Okay. And all this does, you know, if there's any any leaks in the system, it just keeps topping it off there, and it shuts off when it, uh, when it reaches its maximum pressure. Um, or, I can open this tip valve here, oops, I'm going the right way there, and I can get pure coolant there, and you can see that coming out. I think there's some crud in the tip there. Anyway, I can get pure coolant there. Or, I can get coolant and air or very little air, okay? So, anyway, that's how that works. And there's no cloud of noxious mist that chokes you out when you're, uh, when you're, uh, when you're operating there. 
and uh, once again, the, you know, free or cheap bottles and, and all that. So what I'll do is I'll get in close to this and you guys can get a look at that. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the heart of this thing here. And this nut doesn't come off. It's trapped with a, uh, uh, a special wire snap ring that I made that fits in a groove up there. So it can spin, but it can't come off uh, unless I reach in there and pull that snap ring off, which is actually a pain. Um, so there's the, this is the gland seal that, uh, that the bottle goes on to. Um, so it's ported, uh, I think I mentioned it's ported uh, air in, down, out of this hole to pressurize the bottle. Then uh, coolant comes up the, up the tube and out this lower one here. And then this is straight through here, straight through air. So all the pressures are balanced through the system. Um, so these are just standard Buna O-rings. Um, like I said, the hardest part was this uh, uh, making that particular ring. Um, you know what? Um, I'll show you the tool for that. All right, so here's the... Uh, so what I did was I, uh, I cut the... I, oh, come on. I sectioned the, uh, the bottle cap. I sectioned the bottle cap so that I could get a look at the thread. Hopefully you can see that, uh, so that I could get a look at the thread, and then I created a uh, um, a tool that matches the uh, that matches the uh, the bottle thread, and the reason it's pointing that way is I like the thread on the uh, the back side coming out on the lathe, uh, so I ground the tool that way. Um, anyway, so that matches. Now this thread's interrupted. Um, my thread is continuous, um, and it, this is for molding purposes. They have uh, sliding inserts in the uh, in the molds to um, so that the cap can be retracted or will come off of the mold part. Otherwise, it's trapped. Anyway, uh, so anyway, that's the tool ground like that, and um, that did the threading on that on that PVC. This is PVC on that cap. So, and then uh, one more thing, I got an idea for, uh, for James Kilroy on, uh, on his. He's looking for a way to support the, uh, um, the nozzle on this machine. Okay, so when I was first working on this, uh, I was looking for a way to support the nozzle also. Um, one of the advantages of this, of this little Noga is it's on a, uh, um, oops, that doesn't show up, does it? It's on a little mag base here, so I can kind of put it anywhere I want, although I wouldn't put it there. Um, so I can snap it on back here, and I can get it up and right in, into the uh, business area there, or I can probably put it right there, something like that. Anyway, there's lots of options with the magnet. Um, but one thing, this is for James. This might be an idea for his nozzle. This is a little... Um, indicator boss here on the machine so I bent up a uh, a piece here that kind of wraps around the side of the uh, the side of the machine here and kind of tucks in out of the way and what that allows you to do is uh, um, point the nozzle down here for example something like that right and you know you can move it around and and it's not in the way of the operator when they're you when you're using the uh, when you're using the quill or changing tools and things like that. So all this is is a piece of 5 16 coal rolled here that's bent um, to kind of wrap around the spindle and fit in that indicator hole. So maybe maybe that idea will work for you, James. Uh, I'm not going to use it. Um, if you have this um, if you have this boss on your machine, let me know. I'll send this to you, and you can uh, you can test drive it. Okay, and we'll. We'll get this idea ironed out between the two of us and uh, get it working really good. Okay? Anyway, that's it for the coolant system. And uh, thanks, James uh, Kilroy, for uh, getting me off my butt and making a video about it. So uh, he was pestering me to, uh, to show my system there uh, once he got a look at my 2-liter soda, soda bottle. Okay, so uh, we're over here at the welding bench. And uh, somebody was asking about the, uh, uh, the stick torch holder here. And it's just a, a magnetic base, and it's a quarter inch rod that's bent in a kind of a peculiar way uh, so that you can put your TIG torch on there and that you have a place to put it. 
So the problem is, is if uh, you know you're welding on some hot stuff and you kind of lay it down, you end up melting the uh, the uh, the leads and the, or the water lines or something like that. Or uh, worse yet, um, you do something like this and lay it down across your leg. Now. I got a really good story about that, and uh, I'm going to tell you that story. So, anybody that's done any amount of uh, TIG welding uh, knows that the uh, these cups and this whole business end of this gets pretty hot. So, uh, many years ago, I, uh, I used to teach welding at a school in Oakland, and um, um, I had a welding student, and uh, he came up one uh, one night. This was at the, on the night shift, and um, he was kind of acting sheepish, and uh, he says, uh, he goes, oh, I, I, uh, I burned myself. I said, oh, really, let me see. Um, you know, what's the problem, right? And uh, he says, well, it's kind, of in a, uh, it's kind of in a private place. And uh, I said, oh, really? I said, how bad is it, right? And he says, uh, it's kind of bad. Um, so uh, anyway, what he had done was he was welding, and he did that very thing and laid it across his leg, and uh, the tip of this contacted the, the tip of his business, uh, or his junk, and um, uh, burned the very tippy tip tip of his, uh, uh, the business end of him. Anyway, uh, so uh, he was in a bit of pain, so what we did was uh, we sent him, um, we sent him over, to, there was an industrial clinic down the street from us, and we sent him over there, and said, well, just go over here. You know, they'll uh, they'll patch you up, and you, you know, you come back, and uh, when you're when you're done, right? So uh, he, we sent him off, and uh, he comes back pretty soon, right? And we're like, yeah, what's going on? And we said, hey, well, what's going on? What's the deal? He goes, oh, they said uh, um, they said uh, we don't treat that kind of stuff here, and we're saying, well, what are you talking about? And uh, apparently, uh, when he dropped his pants over there, and they took a look at it. They thought he had some kind of uh, STD, and because uh, he had a big blister or something down on his winky, and uh, so anyway, uh, we said, "Oh my God, the poor and you know the poor guy, right? He's hurting, right? And he just wants to get patched up, right?" So we called over there and said, "Hey, listen, this is the welding school. He burned himself. Treat this guy, you know. We're sending him back over there." And uh, and anyway, we sent him back over there, and uh, the guy was you know, humiliated and, uh, and then turned away because they thought he had a, an STD. Uh, but in reality, it was a TIG torch burn. So remember that story next time you feel like laying that thing across your leg, okay? And uh, so that's my funny TIG torch story. So uh, I thought what we'd do real quick is, it only takes a second to bend one of these up, so I'm gonna go ahead and bend one of these up so you guys can see uh, what it looks like to get one bent up. And, uh, and that'll be that for that, so. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and just bend one of these up real fast in the, my little bender here. And I'm not gonna measure anything, I'm just gonna eyeball the, uh, eyeball the lengths here. So the first bend is uh, not quite 90 degrees. So we'll, we'll go there. And then I rotate it in, and put it in a different plane and um, get it like that. And then that next bend is 90 degrees. Okay, that looks like about 90. Okay, and then the next one. And I, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of eyeballing it in, in relation to the end of this uh, forming roll here. Uh, let's try that, that looks pretty good. And you can start to see it uh, forming up there, okay? And then the last bend, we take it out of plane one more time. Let's see, yeah, that looks pretty good. We take it out of plane one more time. And once again, I'm just kind of eyeballing the end of that. And you can bend one of these up in the vise. I mean, it's pretty easy to do. So you don't need a fancy bender to do this. Okay, so this is the one that wants to kind of roll. So I'm gonna hold, hold on to it. Okay, it's going good. Now this particular bend is gonna be over 90. That way we create kind of a downhill slope to that. And there you can kind of see the, the downhill slope to that. And the, what that does is it makes the TIG torch drop down uh, into the into the back of that. And then you can, you can uh, see that one needs a little more. Let's see, I gotta put it back in there this way here. It's gonna line that up. Okay, that looks better. 
Okay, so the, those two are in line now nicely. And that's just all eyeball bends there. That could go that way. So you can nick that off a little bit and round the end and then drop that into a, into a magnet or weld it to a heavy block that sits on your table or something like that. And then you got a nice safe place to put your TIG torch so you don't burn your winky. Okay, for this last one here, we gotta be quiet. Um, what we're gonna do is, some guys do toolbox tours. Uh, this is my toolbox here. But what I thought would be more interesting is if we, uh, uh, we take a look at Mrs. Ox's toolbox. And this is her box right here. And now she's pretty particular about her stuff, so she keeps it locked up. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to try Brad from um, Tactical uh, Keychains. We're going to try his little lock pick out here uh, that I showed you earlier. That's the lock pick, and we're going to try that out on uh, Mrs. Ox's toolbox, and uh, we're just going to have a look inside, see what's going on in there. Okay, so this is just your standard uh, Kennedy toolbox here, and so we're gonna we're gonna give it a try here with Brad's cool tools. Let's see uh, if we can get in. So we're in. So uh, this is her. Uh, this is her old motorcycle that she had. Um, she used to be in the Boilermakers Union, and these are her gloves. What else we got in here? Oh, countersink. Safety glasses. Oh, okay. Pipe fitters books. She used to be a boilermaker and a pipe welder, so. Uh, She's got all her, uh, all her uh, little trade books in there. I gotta put everything back just the way it was. Cause she'll know, she'll know that there's been an ox stomping around in here. Oh, what do we got? Oh, so we got some uh, anti seize drive pin punches. What else? Oh, okay, here's the, here's the fun drawer here. Combination square, a couple of them here. Kinds of neat stuff. Shh, be quiet. Files. Oh, check it out. Jackpot. Here's the keys to the lower part. Oh, check out, check out these big old C-clamps. Look at that. What did she got these in here for? Ooh, look at this. That's a Clico grinder there, a pneumatic grinder. It's kind of nice. Hmm. Oh, look at this. Look at this big old... Big old pipe wedge. That's like a shipyard wedge there. You used to cut them out of a solid plate like that and then just slice them up. Pretty pretty cool. Oop, there you go. Alright, oop, oop, wait a sec. I think I think I hear. Shh, shh, shh. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go. Okay, false false alarm. Got her name and everything here. This is the snap on drawer here. Nice. Oh, what's that? Oh, gee, that's a nice wrench. Holy smokes. Inch and a quarter Bonnie, but it's a black, uh, uh, black, black chrome. That is a really nice wrench. Uh, Oh, 
Hey, okay, so I managed to talk my way out of that one. But here's, uh, I wanted to do a close up on these, uh, uh, these things from CAC, uh, that Brad gave me from Tactical Keychains. So this is a little lock pick uh, set. There's a tension tool. And then um, this is kind of a, uh, a metric and standard uh, wrench. So you can grab, uh, uh, yeah, I don't have a hex in here. Anyway, you can, uh, <clears throat> there's one. Will it fit? No, it's too big. Anyway, uh, you can go on to hex heads there and uh, metric on that side. And then this, I think, is a, a similar thing, but it's more like a T-handle. Then it's got a cool little uh, like wedge or screwdriver or pry bar kind of end on it there. Anyway, thanks for Brad, uh, Brad Martin from Tactical Cheat Chains. And uh, thanks for the gifts, appreciate it. And catch you guys next time. Okay, that's all I got for tonight for this uh, Monday Night Meatloaf episode. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a little bit of fun too. And uh, I managed to talk my way out of trouble there. So um, uh, I just want to say thanks for all the uh, comments and questions, the good questions, and uh, the viewer support that I'm feeling. So uh, I'm just telling you guys that I feel the support and I really appreciate it. And you're making it known to me that you like what I'm doing. And for me, that's great because. Uh, um, I like my trade and I want that uh, I want that to get out and I want people to see that it's a uh, that it's fun and uh, it's a cool thing to do so anyway thanks for watching and uh, see you next time bye